Ranking revealed. Ranking revealed. John chapter 1, 29 and 30. The next day, he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, After me comes a man who has a higher rank than I and has priority over me. For he existed before me. Amen. Beloved, let me start again by refreshing your memory. We are not all on the same level. In the physical realm, I know you accept that. We are not all the same. Go to the airport. You will know your level. I mean, let's tell the truth. You will know your level. In life, there is level being demonstrated everywhere. In the spiritual realm too. We are all born again. We are all children of God. But we don't have the same level. Our rank in the spirit realm is different. We are of the same household. But there are people in this place that are higher than the others spiritually. Not because of superiority. Not because they are better than you. God gives rank, one, for functionality. God gives rank for his purpose and assignment. God gives rank as a reward. God gives rank when he wants to do something special for effectiveness and impact. We don't rank going up. This one is low. This one, no, that's not how it is. We rank going this way. It's not this way. The world ranking system is this way. But the heaven's ranking system is this way. The one that is here is closest to God. That one is ranking higher. And the next one, that's like that. But it's not because this one is better. Is it clear? Beloved, just like in the physical realm, everything in the spiritual realm is done by rank. There are things you can't receive because you don't have the rank to receive it. There are prayers you can pray until you go to heaven. And when you get to heaven, they say, have you heard this word? It's above your pay grade. They tell you that in the world. You want something, they say, that one is above your pay grade. It's the same in the spiritual realm. What you can unlock in the spiritual realm depends on your rank. If you rank low, you will unlock low. Hear me? We are not all the same. John the Baptist is telling us, now you guys are raising and clapping for me. But there is one I told you. He has a higher rank than I. Are you still here? Beloved, your rank determines the weight of your voice in the spiritual realm. Your voice determines how much you can lift, how much you can move in the spiritual realm. Your rank in the spirit determines your spiritual efficacy. Your rank determines what room you can enter. Your rank in the spiritual realm determines how far you can go in life. Beloved, let me go deeper. And this, please pay attention. You need to know this because many of us don't. God has arranged the physical and the spiritual, the visible and the invisible world in realms 
First, there is the physical realm. The physical realm is where all human beings live. It's called a forever realm. It has a beginning and an end, the realm of time. You have a start, you have an end. That's the world you and I live in. The physical world, the forever realm, the realm of time. There's a second realm, the realm of angels. Where angels live, it is called the everlasting realm. Why is that? Angels, even though they are created, they were created beings, but they don't die. They live everlasting. Their realm, where they dwell, is called the everlasting realm. There's a third realm, though. It is the realm of God. We are God Almighty himself. Can I tell you? Let me clear your mind. God don't live in the heaven. They taught us in Sunday school that God lives in the heaven. The question will be, which heaven? Which one? Is it the one beneath the sky? Beyond the sky? Is it the one that I like? No! There is a heaven of heavens. The Bible calls it the highest heavens. God and angels don't live in the same neighborhood. Let me allow it sinking. They taught us in Sunday school that in heaven, God lives there with all his angels. And that, no, God don't like disturbance sometimes. He lives alone in the highest heavens. Angels live in the everlasting realm, not where God lives. I will clear your mind a little bit. Let me show you. Second Chronicles 6 verse 18. But will God indeed dwell with man on the earth? Behold, one, heaven, and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less the house that I have built. Beloved, this is important because in a few minutes you will see where you figure. God lives in the heaven of heavens, in the highest heavens. Angels live in the everlasting realm. Human beings live in the realm of time, the forever realm. Can we go deeper? I don't know how much you know about angels. But let me share a few things with you that will help you. At least in the Bible, there is about 250 mentions of angels. And there's one you know very well, where God is saying he will give his angels charge over you. At least you are sure that there are angels. You are sure that angels minister to you. You are sure that angels are here now in this church. I just announced to you that they are here doing some work. Yes, they are here. They are doing work. They are always around us. They are always with us. But let me shock you. On the face of the earth, there is 9 billion people. The population of angels is innumerable. They cannot be counted. Their population run in the trillions. The Bible says, Hebrews 1.22. Hebrews 1.22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to... God bless you. Beloved, so many things you learned in Sunday school, you will offload this morning. The first is that all angels are the same. All angels are not the same. Angels operate in ranks, just like in the world. They live in an organized realm. And they exist and operate according to their ranks. Another thing you must disabuse from your mind is, it is not every angel that see the presence of God. 
I live in America. I've lived here for 20 something years. I started with Bill Clinton. But I've never seen any of them. But how did you believe then and accept that because someone is an angel, they always see the face of God? They do not. There are angels created that have never been to the heavens because they were created and stationed on the earth. And they will never leave the earth to go to heaven. They have no need to. Their jurisdiction is here. There are angels stationed in the oceans. They don't have business in the heavens where other angels dwell. Am I trying to help you? Beloved, hear this. All angels are not the same. All angels don't carry the same power. All angels don't have the same access. Just like you on the earth know your level. Angels also know their level. The Bible introduces us to nine specific angels that the Bible mentioned. Nine different classes of angels. These angels are organized and arranged in clusters of three. And those clusters we call the choir of angels. A gathering of angels is called a choir. That's that hymn we sang. Ye choir of angels. Angels are organized in choir. So, out of these nine classes of angels, there are three groupings of them. And it is according to their rank. Remember what I told you with ranking in the kingdom of God. It doesn't go up. It goes this way. God is here. The one that is closest to God. Another. So let's talk about angels and their rank. Because it's important you know this. One, the first three angels that rank highest. And why do they rank highest? Because they are the closest to the throne of God. The first three. The highest ranking angel are the seraphs. If there are multiple, they are called seraphim. They are the highest ranking angel. They are the closest angel to the throne of God. They possess six wings. I'll show you Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two, he covered his face. When we preach on angels, you will see why they cover their face. And with two, he cover his feet. And with two, he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. These are the highest ranking angels. Because how do God rank angels? The angels that are closest to the throne of God rank highest. While the angels that are closest to human beings rank the lowest. The second class of angel, we just talked about number one. The, high, the next one is cherubs. When there are multiple, the Bible called them cherubims. Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way with, which turned every way to guard the way to the tree. The third one, many may not have heard this about this angel. is angels called thrones. Thrones. Somebody say thrones. Colossians chapter 1. It's in your Bible. Verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities 
or powers, all things were created by him and for him. That's a second group of three classes of angels. They are dominions. The next one, virtues. The next one, powers. But there's the bottom three. The first one there is principalities. The next one, archangels. The last one is your guardian angel. Let me pause and say something. For so many believers, anytime you hear principality, it is a demon. Anytime you hear principality and power, we must pray against them. Big mistake. When Paul was referring to principalities and powers in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, he was talking about falling principalities. He was talking about falling powers. He was talking about falling rulers of darkness. He wasn't talking of every principality and power. Hear me. The ones that fell, fell with Satan. But God still has principalities and powers as angels that are loyal to him. It's in your Bible. And I'll show you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. Or let's do Colossians 2. 9 and 10. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. Read the ending. These are holy angels. These are clean angels. Not the ones that fell. It's also in Colossians 1 verse 16. Thrones, dominions, principalities, all powers. Let's go deeper. Have you ever wondered why Lucifer, who was an angel, was able to take one third of God's angels? It's a question that I want to answer for you this morning. I told you that all angels don't enter the presence of God. All angels don't see the glory of God. As a matter of fact, some angels haven't seen an archangel. Some angels haven't seen a seraphim or a cherub. Yet, they are angels. Don't we have it in the physical realm? You work in a company. You are drawing paycheck from the company. You have been there for 20 years. Microsoft, you work for Facebook. You work for Elon Musk. You work for Jeff Bezos. When was the last time Bezos came to eat in your house? No, let's talk. Oh, you work in this company. When was the last time the CEO called you on the phone? When we then accept this in the physical realm, we think that the spiritual realm is not organized. The reason the devil, who was Lucifer, was able to make some angels follow him was, he was the only one they have ever known. They were under his command. He was their boss. He received the instruction and gave to them. So on this day, he came and said, just like he has done since they've been working for him. He said, this is what we are doing today. All of them say, yes, sir. Because in the angelic realm, there's order. Someone is held responsible. It's in your Bible. I'll show you. Revelation chapter 12. From verse 7. Now war broke. Now war arose in heaven. Pay attention. Michael and his fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his did he say the angels of God? It's their angels because they are under them rank. Am I communicating? Beloved, we are going to a place where it concerns you. Angels have their own realm. I told you not all of them live 
in that realm. Some live on the earth. Hey, it's not every angel that have wings. As a matter of fact, let me even go forward to tell you. Your guidance angel looks like you. Your guidance angel is a carbon copy of you. Doesn't have wings. It looks exactly like you. When we preach about angels, I'll show you from the Bible. So it's not every angel that have a human form. There are some that their form, if you see it, you start fasting tomorrow. Because you believe you've seen a demon. Go read your Bible. There are angels that have eyes all over them. Hey, Jesus. Can we go deeper? Beloved, hear me. When God lives in the realm of eternity, man lives in the realm of time, the forever realm. And angels live in the realm of everlasting. Hear this. There is a small realm that is between the realm of men and the realm of angels. And that realm is not as big as the realm of angels. It's not as big as the realm of men. It's a small realm. But God established it there. It is called a celestial realm. And your Bible calls it heavenly places. Beloved, have you been to Potomac? When you go to Potomac, you cannot see an Amazon warehouse. When you go to Potomac, you cannot see Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. You don't see them there. Because the million dollar mansions that are there don't want that disturbance. Can I go deeper? In New York, there's a place called the Hamptons. It is the playground of the rich and the wealthy. There are things that you cannot find in the Hamptons. The celestial realm, the heavenly place, is a special place that God designed. In that realm, God has located all his warehouses. He has located the storehouses of his blessings. He has located everything you will ever need on earth. They are not in the heaven of heavens. They are in that small realm, that celestial realm. I will show you from the Bible. Just follow me. This is a place where when you pray on the face of the earth and you are asking for a baby, your guardian angel on the face of the earth don't go to heaven to get it. There are angels that are part of your team. Because everyone don't just have one. There are angels that work with your guardian angel in their own department. When the prayer comes and it is approved that you should receive what you pray for. The angel then goes to the warehouse that is in the celestial realm and fills the order. And he brings it to you. But I'll show you what I just told you in the Bible. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Pay attention. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Where are they located? So when you pray, the angel goes and fills the order. And he begins the journey to come bring it to you. But there's a problem. Houston, we have a problem. In this heavenly place is also where spiritual warfare happens. In this same celestial realm, heavenly place, I see so many people. There's a woman, I shared it with Stella, and they came to church. And the woman was that woman will have beaten a van der Holyfield and Tyson. And their pastor made them begin to box the devil. Oh yeah, beat him. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. That don't go anywhere. 
I saw another group. They went to church with Cain. Some came with 12. And they knelt down on their church floor. And they are flogging the devil. Today I flog you. 24 lashes. The pastor is ignorant. I saw another group. They went with broom. And all of them are sweeping. I sweep her. Beloved, 20 years of ministry have been that stupid. Hear me. Spiritual warfare doesn't happen on the earth. It happens in heavenly places. It happens in the celestial realm. It happens there. We are the storehouses of God are located. I will show you in your Bible. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we do not wrestle with brooms and canes against flesh and blood. But against who? Against who? Against who? Over the present darkness. Against the spiritual of where are they located? Where are your blessings located? The blessings are in heavenly places. The warfare is in heavenly places. Why? Because Satan is smart. He knew where these warehouses were. He knew where they dwelt in the everlasting realm. Guess what he did? He established a checkpoint between the realm of angels and the realm of men. Underneath that celestial realm, the heavenly place, Satan established a demonic checkpoint and he planted his demons there. So when blessings leave the warehouse and the angel is carrying the blessing to you, the demons will stop the angel and say, Who goes there? Stand at attention there. Who are you? Introduce yourself. What, do you, what are you carrying? Open your boot. Let's see. And they begin to search the angel. And in searching the angel, depends on who the angel is, they can take what the angel is bringing to you. They can arrest the angel and detain the angel for as long as they like. Until the angel is released by a higher power. Can I then ask you, if you, if you understand what I just described, say amen. amen. Can you then imagine the many things you didn't receive that left the warehouse, that the angel was bringing it, that prayer was answered, but he never got to you because your angel is a low-ranking angel. Because when angels are weak and not strong, when angels are low ranking, or let me rephrase, when you are low ranking, your angels will be low ranking. I'll show you in the Bible. Go with me to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel is a great man of God. Oh, but before we go to Daniel chapter 10, I want to introduce an angel to you. This angel is one you know very well. So let me introduce him to you so you understand who we are talking about. The angel is Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel is an archangel. He has power. He has rank. He has influence. But let's see what Angel Gabriel says about himself. Look. Chapter 1. Let's see verse 19. This was when the angel Gabriel visited Zechariah. To tell Zachariah about his wife conceiving. And he says. And the angel answered. Now the angel was angry. Because Zachariah said. What you are saying cannot happen. My wife has reached menopause five times. We don't even sleep in the same room anymore. <laughs> and you are talking about having a baby. The angel got mad. And he revealed something he shouldn't have. And the angel answered him and said. I am Gabriel. Read the last part. That is important for you to know. Because it is not every angel that stands in the presence of God. 
Gabriel was trying to tell the man, do you know my access level? I am not like every other angel. I stand in the presence of God and I tell you something and you don't believe me. Let me prove to you that I stand in the presence of God. You will not speak again. And I don't need permission from anyone to do it. Because of who I am and my rank, I can do whatever I want to do for God's glory. He shut his mouth. Good. You know the angel now, shout a big amen. There's a man named Daniel. Daniel was praying. He was praying to receive understanding regarding a matter. And the prayer lasted 21 days. And on the 21st day, this angel Gabriel appeared to Daniel and said, Brother Daniel, join me, praise God. Hey, please join me, thank the Lord. Daniel said, why do we have to do that? I'm glad you're here. He said, my brother, it wasn't easy. Daniel said, what happened? Why is it not easy? Are you not an angel? Then the angel Gabriel let Daniel into a secret. He said, the prayer that lasted 21 days, I can imagine the pepper soup. I can imagine the suya. I can imagine the grilled meat. I can imagine fufu and uh, 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 wine carrying kind of fufu bono that Daniel missed. For 21 days, Daniel was oh God. And this was something that should have taken one day. Because the angel said, on the first day, you lifted your voice to pray. Your prayers were answered. And I was sent to bring you the answer. But Daniel, my brother. Hey! I've never seen a thing like this before. He said, tell me what happened. He said, I've never been arrested before. But coming to meet you was one of the hardest tasks. Because the prince of Pisha arrested me. Put me in detention. For 21 days. And guess what? I thought they gave anybody one phone call. They denied me my phone call. For 21 days, I couldn't make contact. I was trying to free myself. But this prince of Persia and his team were too strong for me. Until I called for backup. And Michael left and came. And he took over the battle while I was released to bring you the blessing. But he said to him, he never finished because they are waiting for me as I go back. I'm again going back. I'll show you it's in your Bible. Daniel chapter 10. Are you with me? Are you being blessed? Daniel chapter 10 verse 12. Then he said to me, fear not Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before God, your words have been heard. And I have come because of your words. 13. But for 21 days, the mighty evil spirit who overrules the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. For 21 days. Then Michael, one of the top officers of the heavenly army, came to help me so that I was able to break through these spirit rulers of Persia. He never finished. I was able to break free. Beloved, can I tell you something? I want you to see something in verse 13. And it's Gabriel that is showing it to us. Put it back. One. Look at the date, 21 days. Then look at who held him captive. He described him as... Say it again. Mighty rank. Look at authority. Who overrules the kingdom of Persia? Blocked me. 
Beloved, I hear many people do the Daniel fast. That's ignorance. The Daniel fast should have been one day fast. But because his angel was arrested. Beloved, and this angel stand before God. This angel is the one that closed the mouth of Zechariah. But coming to Daniel, the prince of the power of the kingdom of Persia blocked him. What are we saying? Authority. This is my kingdom. Yes, you may have rank. We may be of the same rank. But hear me, you are not going through. Daniel is not going to receive what you are taking to him. We will make sure of that. Beloved, I ask you again. How many of your blessings? Oh, you are still praying for something now. But it was released five years ago. It was released a month ago. It was released two years ago. But the reason you've not received it is that because of your lower rank, your angel is of a lower rank. And when they got to the kingdom of Hoka, when they got to the kingdom of Mbano, when they got to Jebuote, when they wanted to cross the territories of Nigeria, the prince of the power of the kingdom of Nigeria said, ah, ah, this kind of blessing don't go to that family. That person is not going to receive it. Can I shock you? Your prayer and your fasting is fuel and fire for your angel. If you are prayerful, your angel will have strength. If you are not prayerful, your angel won't be able to contend. If you have a higher rank, your angel will have connection. Your angel can call for backup. Your angel can activate Michael. But if you don't have a higher rank, your angel won't have a higher power to call. Hear me? The almighty God is too holy and too powerful to leave his throne to come and fight for you. Oh, you didn't, let me tell this people. Hear me? You are called, oh God, Oh God, help me. The almighty God is too majestic to leave his throne to come and help you. When he has servants that do the work and you are calling him to come and help you. The reason you must increase and improve and upgrade in rank is that when you begin to rank high, you can begin to receive visitation of a higher ranking angel. A man whose angel stand in the presence of God, an angel couldn't break through to come to him until Michael, beloved, you see where rank is important. Your rank determines which angel you will receive. Your rank determines the importance of your prayer. Your rank determines whether your blessing can cross the realm where there's this evil checkpoint. Let me give you an instance. If there's a police checkpoint and you are the brother of the AIG or you are the brother of the Inspector General of Police, and mobile policemen, 20 of them, 30 of them, they are stopping people and you. They say, open your boot. You say, do you want to talk to IG? Let me call him. Man. He said, no, sir. Who are you, sir? I am the IG's younger brother. All you need to do is show them something that tie you to IG. Take out that thing. Okay, you can go. You can go. You can go. They didn't look at your boot. It doesn't matter what you carry. There's a name you dropped. Rank. I am connected to this person. Am I preaching? Beloved, this is serious. The heavenly place is where the blessings are. The heavenly place is where they are trying to make sure you don't receive them. Are you still sitting down? You will open your mouth and pray any of my blessings. Trapped in the heavenly place. 
Hear the voice of the Lord. Be released now. In Jesus, my name will pray. Amen. Sit down, please. Let me take 10 more minutes, please. I need to wrap up this thing well. Beloved, if you've ever prayed in the name of Jesus and nothing happened, what you wanted to change, you didn't change, please lift up your hand and say, Don't lie. If you've ever prayed in the name of Jesus and it didn't change, it's not because the name is not powerful. It's because of rank. There's a boy, Stella and I saw him when we went home. He got born again, a young boy in his 20s or early 30s. His brother was, is a bomb, was a bomb. The brother has died, older brother. But this one got born again. Oh, he was so excited. Very handsome guy in the university. And as we grew up, Playing in their compound. Their compound is close to my mother's family. So we played there. Once you enter the gate of their compound, there's a small shrine with an idol built inside that shrine. We played inside that. And that idol is older than my mother. That small house, they keep renovating it, putting roof and all. So this boy didn't like it. So he got born again. Was going to evangelism. I said, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Jesus, everything was going well. One day he went to his pastor and said, Pastor, there's this shrine in our family. I want you to come and break. Pastor said, oh, I'm very busy, my brother. Very, very busy. But I will give you something. Bring me one bottle of oil. Give you the oil. I pray on it. You go. Just uh, enter the shrine. Pour the oil on the idol. The idol will finish. The young boy agreed. Took the bottle of oil came back, entered the shrine, and said, in the name of Jesus, I stand in the shoe of my father. Before you can stand in the shoe of your father, you need to know in whose shoe your father is standing. Your father's leg is on bathroom slippers, and you are coming to an idol. The idol was looking at the boy. I buried your father early. I made your older brother a bomb. I made sure nobody in that family have ever prospered. And you come here with one bottle of oil. Or you finish your rent. The name of Jesus, today is your end. After he finished, he poured the oil on the uh, idol. The moment he turned around to go, he became mad. I tell her, as we got to visit my mother's family, as I was turning the car, he came to the window begging me for money. And somebody told me that's what happened to him. His pastor deceived him. You don't go where God don't send you. You don't go where you don't have rank to operate. Let me shock you with another one. They knew the name of Jesus was powerful. Seven sons of Sceva. They've done it before with some other people. It worked. And one day they saw another man with a demon. And they already got popularity. Seven brothers that perform miracles. Seven brothers that cast out demons. They didn't know that demons are in ranks and in levels. And the only thing they obey is not, you know, as Caesar, shout, pray louder. Demons are not deaf, they hear. Don't have to shout loud before they will obey. They obey rank, not voice. They obey the rank that is speaking the name of Jesus. I'll show you. The seven sons of Sceva came across this person with a demon. And they said he walked the other time. It must work now. In the name of Jesus Christ, whom Paul preaches. Look at it. Acts 19. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had the full spirit, saying, I adjure you, I adjure you, I command you. By the Jesus whom Paul proclaimed, and the group is seven sons of a Jewish high priest. At least they knew church. They knew about spirituality. They were priests in training. And they were doing this. But the evil spirit answered them. 
Jesus, I know his rank. Paul, I recognize his rank. Oh yeah, introduce yourself. <laughs> Who are you? The Bible says, the boys couldn't introduce themselves well. It's like uh, a private standing in the door. And the major general is coming with his bodyguards and entourage. And the private stand there and say, you cannot cross. I was stationed there and nobody. The way they will uproot him, he will be in the guard room. His family will not hear about him for one year. Whether that general is permitted or not to enter there, he must enter. Because the person at the door is a lower rank. Put the seven sons of Skiva Bell. And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them. Master didn't mean he massaged them. Master means that he overpowered them. And guess what? He made sure he took off all their clothes. And them and him, even he was mad, but he was wearing clothes. But these seven were new mad people that took madness to a new level because they came to a demon that ranked higher than them and wanted to cast it out. I'll close with another story. Lucifer was a cherub and he fell and became Satan. But he still had his rank. He still has that rank till today. After Lucifer deceived Adam and Eve, Satan now, he was chased, they were chased out of the garden. God didn't just send a guardian angel. It's in your Bible. God sent a cherubim, two of them, because the person that did the evil was a cherub. And the only person can stop that can stop Satan from coming to the garden to take the, from the tree of life will be a cherub. It's in your Bible. God planted cherubims. Let me shock you again. After Moses died, Satan, because he's a legalistic person, knew that God and Moses fell out on an issue. One, his anger. And because he hit God on the head with a stick. So when Moses died, Satan came and said, this man is not going to heaven. He belongs in my kingdom, in hellfire. God had to dispatch another angel that ranked on the same level with Lucifer. But you need to see something. Put Jude. Jude. Put it up for me, please. Jude 1, verse 9. Jude has only one chapter. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil and arguing about the body of Moses, he did not dare bring an abusive condemnation against him. What did he do? He simply took it to a higher level. The Lord rebuke you. I cannot abuse you. We rank on the same level. I know my authority. And I know your rank. I can't disgrace a man on my ranking level. But there is one that I will use against you. I carry his authority. The Lord rebuke you. The moment Michael connected to the Lord. Before the New Testament, the name that is above every name was still working. The moment he connected, Satan said, I yield. 